I grew up in an era when Fitzroy was at its most political. I was lucky enough to be in Fitzroy when unity and caring for each other was at its highest peak. No one was special, because we're all special. You could sleep in the park with your runners on. I'm lucky because I got to meet, work and learn with some of the greatest social justice activists this country has ever seen. These people were at the forefront of us gaining human rights on all levels. They are gods in my eyes. They triggered my motivation to achieve land rights and independence in Aboriginal health. I was born in Carlton and lived with my mother, father and siblings on the outskirts of Melbourne. At five, I was separated from my family and didn't reconnect with my family until I was 14 or 15. My mum was living in Melbourne at the time. Her house was always full, so I ended up at Gladys Nichols Hostel. The hostel managers were Uncle Dan and Auntie June Atkinson, who soon became, sort of, my parents. The only thing that I knew was that you only get what you want if you fight for it. Physically, that is. And if you couldn't fight, you were basically a social outcast. What changed me was an Aboriginal Community Organisations course. This was run by Dr Bruce McGuinness, Gary Foley and John Morrison. We were in class one day and Foley asked us students to put up your hand if you had been separated from your family or adopted out. Out of 28 of us in the class, 26 put up their hands. We all thought we were the only ones that had been separated from family. From that point on, I have totally understood what has happened to me, my family, my community, and my people as a nation. I finally understood where I was at and why I was there. Being politically aware gave me peace and harmony and filled in the gaps that existed between myself and my past. When I was 18 or 19, Alma Thorpe of the Victorian Aboriginal Health Service recognised a lot of us young ones needed more to do than just hustle around the Builders Arms Hotel. She offered me a job as a dental nurse and I gladly accepted. All government health programs failed dismally. They were insensitive and completely incompetent. No consultations were made with Aboriginal communities. Health programs were largely based on the outskirts of town and Aboriginal people were not included in controlling any programs whatsoever. The Victorian Aboriginal Health Service started in 1973. It was the first Aboriginal community controlled health service in Victoria and was the second in Australia after Redford. This was also a result of the Black Power movement. Black Power was the catalyst for land rights, human rights and the development of Aboriginal community controlled health services and legal services. From the Black Power Movement came the establishment of the Aboriginal Legal Service in Redfern in 1970. In 1972, the Redfern Aboriginal Medical Service was established and also the development of the Aboriginal Tent Embassy. The Embassy was a meeting place, a place for political asylum. I remember vividly all the police surrounding the tent, the screams as police descended. I remember a lot of violence being inflicted on a lot of people. There was brutality everywhere. In 1973, NAO was born, the National Aboriginal and Islander Health Organisation, and became the most feared national black organisation this country has ever had. The most feared because for the first 10 years of its operation, it was policy not to accept any government funding whatsoever. NAO was our political voice in the world of Aboriginal health and managed to assist hundreds of communities to develop their own Aboriginal community controlled health services. In 1982, Koori College was born, the first Aboriginal health worker education program in Australia. A large percentage of these health workers were from interstate and upon finishing the course, they actually went back home and established Aboriginal community controlled health services. They were not just Aboriginal health workers, they were community developers in every sense of the word. I took all of that knowledge home to Gunchamara country and established an elderly citizens association and a fully fledged Aboriginal community controlled health service in Portland. I applied the same principles in a host of other communities around the country while I worked with NAO. 
Aboriginal health is still at its worst in Australia. ABS figures are getting worse, Aboriginal health organisations are continually underfunded, and the current government has placed no priorities on Aboriginal health. Don't be fooled by media reports that indicate otherwise. We have already made a difference in Aboriginal health with community control, so it is the only model in existence that works. Imagine how many Koorias would have died without Aboriginal community control health services. We will continue the fight for land rights and we will continue the fight for culturally relevant Aboriginal health. Thank you.